Good morning, and welcome all to worship today as we gather in our Lord's name. A few announcements to highlight. First, a special welcome to anyone who is joining us online. We are preparing for our next new member orientation that will take place two weeks from today. Following this service, we'll have pizza in the fellowship hall following the service. And an informal time, about an hour and a half, letting you know about life and ministry at Trinity. So, if you've been visiting, I encourage you to consider becoming a member. We have opened the preschool registration for next fall for the Trinity Lutheran Preschool. We are very gifted and blessed with an active and wonderful preschool here with Mrs. Corner as our teacher. Registration is open now for the next school year. You can go online to find out more information. Also, two weeks from today, we will be holding our annual meeting on the 23rd. And at this annual meeting, we take some time to reflect on the previous year's ministry that we've been doing as a congregation and have some conversation about what will be coming up in this calendar year. If you've never been to one of these, I um, encourage you to come. Um, it's good, solid work, and by our Constitution, we need a certain number of people to be in attendance to hold the meeting. So we need you. Please come to that meeting. It is at 9.15 between worship services. Deacon Christie has a day off today to spend time with her family. We pray for her and her family that it's a refreshing time. Last week, if you were in worship, you heard greetings from her 
her son-in-law and daughter who are our missionaries in Slovakia. In Slovakia. They work at an international church in Bratislava. So we're glad they're home on furlough, and we pray for a, a good time for them together as a family. Those are our announcements today. I invite the congregation to please rise as we sing our gathering song. one God who forgives our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let's pray together. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice and be called children of God, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
first reading Isaiah chapter 43, verse, verses 1 through 7. But now thus says the Lord who he created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I, I have called you by name, you are mine. When, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not overwhelm you. Shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and, and Seba in exchange for you, because I, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the, to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who, who I created for my glory, who I formed and made. Second reading, Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. And now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The king went down and prayed to them. And and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they had received the Holy Spirit. Now, our response, our response of reading, Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord in his strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The, glory, the God of glory thunders. The Lord of, of over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord begins with cedars and Lebanon. He makes Lebanon drip like calf and Syrian like the young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of the earth. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and sets the forest bare, and in all of his temple they all say, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May, may the Lord bless his people with peace. Children. Come on down for children's sermon. I'm going to show you something I grew myself. This might get a little messy up here. Okay. Anyway, this looks, you're going to know what this is, but it's a little different from what you've seen before. Anybody see what you know what that is? It's seed, you're right. That is actually corn, but it's not yellow, it is red. And we grew this in my garden, and I took it off the top. It's really dry. But I can't use it this way because, you may not know this, but there is something called chaff that comes with corn. And so you have to separate the seeds from the chaff, and we're going to do that. But this sounds really cool. Can you do that, don't you? Yeah, that kind of fun. Okay. Now watch this. And you in the front row might re regret where you sat. You know how you get rid of the chaff on this? Can we get rid of some more chaff? Custodian isn't going to be this happy about Oh, I spilled some of the actual corn. But what I'm doing is I'm getting it ready so I can make cornbread. But if you have that chaff in there, that stuff doesn't taste very good. That's the bad part. And if you're doing a pot of corn, like there, this is all got it. It's all so, so done. So that just separated the, the seeds from the chaff. And now that is ready to be ground up into flour. Or next spring, I can take those seeds and I can plant it again. And you know something that's amazing? One of these seeds, when it grows into a kernel of, of corn, 
will give me over a hundred more seeds. So can you imagine this amount of seeds times a hundred? It would just be this many. And then if I planted all of those seeds the next year, there would be that many. And then if I planted all of those seeds again, we would fill this entire room with seeds of corn. Could we do that? Uh, there you go. That's going to be a great children's sermon in three years. We probably won't do that. But I wanted to show you this because in the Bible today, when I read the story, we're going to find out from about Jesus that a guy named John the Baptist is going to say, someone who is coming is going to baptize you, and he's going to separate the seed from the chaff. And so what he's talking about is what Jesus does is he helps us get rid of that stuff that's in us. You know, like when we get really mad and just super lose our temper, or we say things we don't mean. I'm talking to the adults now. And to the kids. That's the chaff that gets blown off. And Jesus helps us with that. That Jesus loves us and gives us a new way to be. So now you know about the seed. This is an important part of what we do in church. But if you look at that picture over there, you see the tall things that look like pieces of grass? That's wheat. And that's, you get the wheat the exact same way you do this. You separate the wheat from the chaff. Let's, let's pray today. Repeat after me. Dear God, we give you thanks for loving us, for helping us, and for being with us. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, kids. You can go back to your seat. invite the congregation to, to rise. As we hear about the wheat and the chaff in Luke chapter 3, when we begin with John the Baptist and the distinction between the baptism of John and the baptism of Jesus. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water. But one who is more powerful than I am coming, I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was open up. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. Brothers, sisters, friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you all. In the name of Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. I am just curious. Anybody in here? Ever attend a one-room schoolhouse? Oh, there's more than I thought. We've got a good half dozen one-room schoolhouse people. I, as a young pastor, served in Hayes, South Dakota, population 10, 35 miles west of Fort Pier in Stanley County, and right next to the church was a two-room schoolhouse, an upper room and a lower room. But for those of you who know how one-room schoolhouses work, you have usually eight or nine grades in one room, and the teacher teaches them all. So they will sometimes take aside the younger ones and do a lesson and the older ones to do a lesson. And I have been told quite often that the younger ones are often learning more by overhearing what's being taught to the older ones. So today I'm going to call this a version of a one-room schoolhouse sermon on the Gospel of Luke where some of you are very comfortable with Scripture and know a great deal about Scripture, and some of you probably wouldn't feel comfortable even opening the book up. This is the sermon for you. 
because in this baptism of Jesus and the conversation that John has about what baptism is, we're all going to learn deeply. And so there'll be times that it's almost like I'm going to be preaching to the eighth graders, and if you feel like a first grader, this is for all of us. So grace and mercy to you all as we enter into the scripture, because John's baptism of repentance, that's John the Baptist, is different than the baptism that we perform here. So what is the difference? John the Baptist, when he was out on the Jordan River baptizing people, we are told thousands of people came. Crowds and crowds and crowds came for a baptism for repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Because all of these people knew that they were not doing the things that were bringing them life, the things that were helpful. Repentance literally means going from this way to another way. Not unlike New Year's resolutions. Been talking with people about New Year's resolutions. Some are good at it. Some are not so great at it. I need New Year's resolutions because of you. That's how John's baptism works. New Year's resolutions. And I need a New Year's resolution because you are such tremendous Christmas bakers. Did you know that? And you want pastors not to be skinny. So all through the month of December. You brought into the office the best of your best goodies, and not wanting to offend any of you, I ate every single one. So now I stand here in the middle of January, a little bit plumper, with great intentions to go a little bit lighter on the sweets. Blood pressure's not so great. Go lighter on the fat. Go lighter on the salt. The New Year's resolution. John the Baptist is talking to people who really sense what they're doing is not helpful to their lives. People dealing with anger and fear and pride and greed. Uh, you could say John the Baptist, if he was here today, he would have a great podcast. Maybe one of those edgy podcasts, or he would do a TED Talk, or he would write a self-help book. And all of those things are very helpful. Except, do you know what I'm having for lunch today? I'm having homemade pan-fried cast iron chicken. So much for my resolution. Because the challenge is, we know with many of these good intentions, boy, that fried chicken with all that salt is so tempting. So there's a temptation to slide back. John the Baptist is telling the people that one is coming who will baptize you not with water in the way that I'm doing for repentance, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit itself. And talks about one who is going to come and baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire, which brings this image. That Holy Spirit in fire, the whole idea of that chaff that is not much good for anything, it can be turned away. Because that's how you get rid of the chaff. This goes in the granary, and the rest gets burned. But now into the baptism of Jesus, of what we teach that what we do now when children and babies and teenagers and adults gather at this font to be baptized, we'd say we baptize the baptism of Jesus. And this image will be helpful. Because in the same way that the primary symbol for John the Baptist is one who points at Jesus, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, one of the primary images to help us know what Jesus is about is wheat, the image of grain. So before we get to this end process of a harvested seed that is separated from the chaff, let's begin to talk about what Jesus' baptism is by going to his core teaching that a few years after his baptism, Jesus is going to use a similar image of the seed but it's going to be about at the beginning to talk about how God works. 
I'm going to invite you to listen to this scripture. You can follow along on the screen if you if you choose. On the next slide, we'll do that one. Perfect. This is the core core teaching of Jesus called the Parable of the Sower. When the crowds will come to him, in the same way that the crowds came to John the Baptist, this is where Jesus starts. He says, God is like this. When a great crowd gathered and the people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow his seed. Okay, I've already made a mess, so I'm going to try this. You know how a sower works? It's like this. I apologize, Lori. That's how you plant. Sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell on the path, was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on the rock. And as it grew up, it withered for lack of moisture. Some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Some fell into good soil, and when it grew, it produced a hundredfold. As he said this, he called out, let everyone with ears listen. And then he goes on to explain what this means. But as for those that are in good soil, these are the ones who, when they hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience and endurance. One of the main interpretations of this scripture is that Jesus says, the way that God works is God takes this precious seed and He generously and He graciously sows it on everyone. And the seed is Jesus. That Jesus is a generous and gracious gift for everybody. Whether you are at a point in your life where you are just feeling so full of weeds that you feel like you're not worth much of anything or that you're at a droughty time, or you feel like you're a path, or you're at that point where you are receptive and you feel like you're hearing the experience of Jesus for the first time wherever you're at, that's where Jesus begins. He describes what God is doing through him. But you know, it's, it's probably the worst agricultural practice you could use. Imagine the work that goes into getting good seed. You would think that God would take this good precious seed and just put it on well-prepared soil. That is not how God has chosen to work. But God is looking at us in our goodness, in our badness, in our brokenness, in our neighbor, in our neighbor's neighbor, and our neighbor's neighbor, and casting Jesus out. And what we teach is that the difference between John's baptism and the baptism that Jesus gives is like heart surgery. A change of heart and a very change of how we enter into the world. And the way we live that out is through faith. In trusting that Jesus is who he is, he does what he says he will do, and he will provide for us in the way that Jesus says he will provide. That is such an important understanding that it's the core teaching of the Lutheran faith, of all Protestant faiths. So 500 years ago, during the time of the Reformation, these protesters developed what we call now the Protestant principle. And so this is like the eighth grade version of stuff. So if it's new to you, that's okay if this is the first time you're hearing it. If you feel like a first grader, this is for you too. And the Protestant principle is simply this. We are justified by faith through grace. We are justified. We are made right. We are brought into the very presence of God. Not by us getting everything right. Not by us choosing well and meeting all of our goals. But we are brought into God's very presence by trusting Jesus. And that's by grace. That God's Spirit comes to us and gives us ears to hear. So now back to the threshing. 
when you clean out that gas, it's actually be, it's called cleaning drain. You clean this drain so that it can be used. Jesus is the one who makes us righteous, who in the religious language sanctifies us, makes us holy, and even pushing it further. Martin Luther said, you and me through faith become little Christs. Isn't that a bold statement? That through faith, as we are immersed in this death of baptism that opens up into the new life, into this kingdom of God that God intends for the world on this side of the grave and on the next, we become little Christs for our neighbors. And so we enter into this very setting, and this becomes the, the way for Jesus to describe who we are, how we proclaim together what we're doing in this place. So we have the image of the grain in front of us. We'll be receiving Holy Communion with the bread to be built up and to be fed so that we can go out. This is for you. Whether you've been good soil or not. Two stories about times of cleansing. This is because this is challenging, this difference between a baptism for repentance and a baptism that renews us and cleans us. John's chapter of Jesus versus Jesus. Because it's very easy to get totally sucked into the understanding of John's baptism. Unfortunately, um, the church has sometimes been described as the only people who shoot their wounded. So that when you may have entered a time in your life that you are really wounded. And historically, sadly, we've been guilty over the centuries in the face of, you know, this person isn't quite right. They're not living up to who they need to be. And so there's a sense of outcastness that comes. And every once in a while that creeps in and it just cuts us in the heart. There's a story about a time like that, about what it means to live and to embrace not that baptism just of repentance, but this baptism that changes us and cleanses us and renames it. It's actually a story from the famous um, singer Amy Grant. Um, some of you may have heard her music, but she was an icon of Christian music in the late 70s and into the 80s. You would recognize her music. Um, in the late 90s, she went through a, a very difficult divorce. And received a lot of heat for that. And she was going through a very difficult time. And she went through an interview after just hearing all kinds of hard stuff when she was at a really broken place. And she came to these conclusions, and I share this with you. And it's a transition from that first type of baptism to an embracing of the second. In this interview, she said, Jesus led by compassion. No one is ever changed because of judgment. No one's judgment, no one is ever healed through judgment. And then the interviewer said she thought some more. And she said, the hardest part for me is forgiving myself. But once you do, you can't keep going back. You accept the grace and you live. What a beautiful understanding of accepting the grace and living, of trusting this promise that this is real, that the seeds are not made for perfection. The seeds are made for us in our reality. And a second story that's a little closer home for me is what do you do when you have those little moments during the day where you have to decide? that you don't realize you're in a seed moment or not until you're presented with the opportunity 
to be this Christ for neighbor. It happened to me yesterday, just had a wonderful morning off, very lazy, relaxing Saturday morning. I had plans to go make a quick trip to the hospice house in the afternoon, but didn't have much else planned. And then I got a text. Have you noticed that whenever you get a text, you usually need to make some type of decision? And it was a text from a, a dear friend of mine who lives out in Rapid City, and this is how seeds work. Because they're not solitary seeds, they get scattered. One seed touches another and another. And he had a friend of his who had contacted him about a family member who had come over to Sioux Falls to help with, with some family family things, had broken her arm with helping with grandkids. There was some incarceration involved, a really complex story that some of you have been in those situations before. And a window had gotten broken and looking for a few groceries and for some plastic for a window. Do you know anyone who can help? And so I am looking. And I'm trying to think of a way to say no. Because the couch is really comfortable. And then, because of my good friend, and the friend of a friend, and the family members of a friend, I'm not saying this to brag at all, because it's actually just the opposite. My first intention was to knock it off the couch. Instead, I ran over to church, to our food pantry, to pick up some stuff from our food pantry. By the way, if any of the children who are here, if you brought food to your school food collections, thank you. It gets brought here and then it gets distributed. Ran up some food, ran a piece of plastic, and a wonderful brief conversation with this grandma and these young children. It took me 45 minutes. And if I thought I was scattering seeds, they were scattering seeds right back at me. And so the complexity of the kingdom of God and God's arithmetic of this spirit and fire attacking the worst of our inclinations and building up the best of them suddenly became a, a mutual harvest of seeds given and seeds received and a brand new piece of life began. That doesn't mean a big change happened to any of us, other than a few people helping each other to get further down the road, but it becomes the core understanding of what this baptism is. That through faith, we are given the gift of another way of seeing, of being, of being for neighbor, and the neighbor of the neighbor, and the neighbor of the neighbor. And suddenly it starts to make perfect sense when it says, one seed expands a hundredfold. And then the story goes on and on, but as I was making my way home in the end of the afternoon, I had a thought. And it seems like a strange little thought, but I thought of my mother's gravestone. My mother's been passed away for over 20 years, and on her gravestone, the only thing she has carved, other than name and date, is a single stalk of wheat. And if you want a symbol that's going to tell you whether you are brand new to the Christian faith or you have been walking in these, these waters for your whole life, it's this grain of wheat. And what it says in John, the Gospel of John, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. That promise of eternal life is for both sides of the grave, that eternal life that begins now in our love of neighbor, our endurance in the midst of things we cannot understand, in this spirit providing for us with joy and peace and possibility, and then it continues in that final harvest in that last day when we close our eyes and we experience God's goodness in His full glory and the harvest is complete. So we come together today to picture the kingdom of God, what it is right in this room so that it may strengthen us to go out and to be the kingdom of God in our own 
imperfect word, world filled and fed by this bread of life who continues to provide. One room schoolhouse lessons. Jesus present among us again and again and again. Brothers and sisters, may you be strengthened this week as you, yes, you, get to be Christ in your homes. Amen. We're going to sing this um, beautiful hymn. If we can look at the slide, David, this is a description of what this baptism of our Lord is like about singing our praise in this new way of seeing this wonderful life. rise, and with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the Church, those in need, and all of God's creation. By your Holy Spirit, O God, activate within your church the gifts of faith, healing. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographic boundaries. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate surprise and miracle. Lord, in your mercy. Your creation reflects your generosity. Bless farmers, farm workers, ranchers, and all who tend the abundance of the land. Protect food and water resources from destruction that all can eat and drink and be satisfied. Lord, in your mercy, by your Spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who hold leadership positions at any level. As South Dakota enters the legislative session, direct policy makers toward compassionate decisions, 
that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving the common good. Lord, in your mercy. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing for those in need this day, especially Jean Jellin, Greg Nirmo, Doug Keenan, Kevin Ross, Doug DeYoung, Diane Spear, Linda Goulet, Kayla Davis, Loretta Harms, Nancy Peterson. Lord, in your mercy. We are joined in baptism to Christ and to one another. Bless those who are newly baptized and those who are preparing for baptism. Help us be faithful in worship, evangelism, service, and justice seeking. Lord, in your mercy. You created each of your things for your glory. We give thanks for those who have called, you have called by name into your eternal embrace. Comfort us in grief and release us from fear. Lord, in your mercy. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all our prayers to you with confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share a sign of that peace. We will gather our morning's offering.
fade from your wisdom, O Lord, that you see and know all that we do not understand. We bring our offerings as a sign of our trust that you will bless our efforts and multiply them on behalf of the disadvantaged and despairing. Our hope lies always in your goodness and all powerful love. Amen. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. As our communion servers come forward this morning, a few instructions. If you are new to this gathering, know that everyone is welcome at this table. So you can simply come forward and place your hand out to receive a wafer of bread, and then the wine is in small cups, purple for wine, white grape juice, and the white tray. Um, if you prefer a blessing, simply cross your arms and you'll receive a blessing. Come, all the trays.
congregation of free crowns. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and keep you in His grace. And the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. And God of grace bless you now and forever. Amen. We'll sing our sending song. Good. And all the time. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. 